this guy calls and he, he goes, do you guys sell porch swings? I said, well, yeah. And I reach across like this, boom, and I kick Doug and I go, look up porch swing. He's like, he goes, it's available. So he buys, right while they're sitting there, the domain porchswings.com. From Grindstone, this is Nebraska Made, a narrative journey through the lives of Nebraska's most inspiring business leaders. We unpack the intimate details of how our guests navigated obstacles and built their companies in pursuit of the good life. I'm JT Martin, and today we hear from Mark Haysbrook, the founder of the e-commerce company, Hayneedle. Our guest today paved the way for Nebraskan startups to successfully raise funding. My name is Mark Haysbrook. I'm the founder of Dundee Venture Capital. You see, in 2011, Nebraska ranked dead last in venture capital deals with exactly zero. So this was a big problem. Mark proved that innovative ideas could happen here, and he did it in an e-commerce startup that you might have heard of called Hayneedle. I'm a Nebraska native, born in Omaha. Uh, I haven't strayed real far, so my whole universe is like 40 miles. What did you study in college? I was business in college. I was in Sigma Chi fraternity, and uh, I think the first two years, I don't think I really did much of anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, so one of the things, uh, there was five of us at the time wanted to go down to Padre Island for spring break. I didn't have a dime to my name. My roommate was from Gordon, Nebraska. And Jim came back from Gordon one time with these pair of these moccasins on. And I said, where did you get those? And he said, well, we live out in Gordon, and which is right next to the Native American reservation out there. I said, well, you think we could sell those on campus? And he said, absolutely. So we put a little flyer together and we went around to sororities and sold these moccasins. And this was back when colorful moccasins were kind of in. So anyway, we, we placed all these orders and we had raised enough money uh, from the profits of the sale of the moccasins to go to Padre Island. And it was great, so, you know. So we come back, uh, we're driving up into the driveway of the Sigma Chi house and there's four girls standing outside of our fraternity and two of them are pointing at us. And I'm like, Jim, this is awesome, look. And they're holding their shoes up. And I said, we're gonna be millionaires. They want more, look how many people are just standing outside. And we get out of the car and, and we're like, we think we're all these triumphant guys returning. And, and this one girl comes up and goes, look at my feet. And her feet were purple because <laughs> the dye from the moccasins had leaked through onto her feet. And all of their feet, purple and blue, yellow, <laughs> red. It was a disaster. It's a complete train wreck. And uh, we had to, we just said, look, we'll refund your money. We're sorry. We're absolutely embarrassed. We had no idea how we were going to do it, but we're going to make it right. So Mark gets his first taste of the perils of quality control. He continues on to graduate with a degree in business. And since his father and grandfather had both been bankers, he decides to start his career at First National Bank in the commercial lending department, which means he'd be loaning money to small businesses all across Nebraska. He takes a career detour to franchise a Vicks corn popper location and helps them eventually get acquired before joining McCarthy Capital, where he spends the next 10 years helping Nebraskans value and sell their businesses and access capital. And it was in this role that Mark had a light bulb moment that was inspired by one of Nebraska's most notable brands, Cabela's. One of the first businesses that we got a chance to go and, and do what's called a valuation. You know, a lot of business owners want to know what their business is worth. And uh, Cabela's at the time had a thing called an ESOP, Employee Stock Ownership Plan. And they invited us in to make a pitch on why we'd be the best ones to help them value that every year. Jim Cabela was sitting where you are and I had to tell our story. And in my typical form, I was just uh, blah, 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 and Jim just doesn't talk. He's got a sign on his desk and it says, be brief, be blunt, be gone. 
And, and you ignored that. I'm totally. I'm just like, and so here's why we're so smart. Da, da, da. And finally, I just shut up. And I was like, so any other questions? And he's like, no, nope, I think I got it. You know? And did, did you win the pitch? Yeah, we did. Oh, we, there you we, go. We did. But I mean, I was, you know, I was sweating. I was just <laughs> awful, you know. But and nevertheless, I mean, so I got a chance to really see <clears throat> the early years, at least when we got involved with, with them and, and admired those, those guys tremendously. But I think I got an inside look at e-commerce from them. I kept kind of thinking, hmm, there's there's something here. And in fact, I think it's bigger than brick and mortar and will dwarf brick and mortar someday. And you'd get this look from people like, what? What do you mean? No, no there's no way. Uh, I think so. So yeah, um, Doug Nielsen, uh, hands down best salesperson I've ever met ever met he walks in to McCarthy Capital and he said I have this idea that uh, I think that we should sell gift certificates online and having been exposed to all the gift cards through Cabela's I was and knew what their whole business model was with the gift cards I was thinking this is kind of interesting and he said we'll buy them at a discount and we'll sell them for face value and we just need the capital to get that going. And I went to the McCarthy group and said, I think this is something we might back. We should maybe invest in this thing. And it was, the response was like, what are you, what? <laughs> are you nuts? This will never work, you know? And I talked to Doug and I said, look, this isn't something that McCarthy and company is going to do or probably anybody locally, but I'm interested in making this work with you. And he and Julie and I got together and kind of fleshed things out and decided to go for it. And uh, giftcertificates.com was born. And so we went to the coasts to raise money, went to Seattle. In fact, Madrona Capital was our first investor. And uh, uh, this was mistake number one of many. Uh, Madrona, we sit down, we give our pitch. Said, well, how much you guys raising? And I said, well, we think we need to raise $500,000. And we think that'll get you 10% of the company. And Paul Goodrich, who's the managing partner of, of Madrona, looks around and he goes, I don't think you guys need a half million dollars. And I said, and we had worked this model to the penny. And we thought, well, why is that? I think you need 5 million. 5 million, why? This is a land grab right now. More capital, spend, 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 get out there, get your name known to everybody, and that's gonna take a lot of money. But we'll put five million in. And we said, well, we just valued our business at five million. <laughs> so, but we worked something out. Uh, they were our first investor. And one of many strategic blunders was just taking too much capital in the early heyday of the internet. And it wasn't like we're gonna hire two people, you hire 20. It wasn't, you're gonna market and spend 100,000 a month, it's 250,000 a month. There were times where we would look at each other and go, is, does this make any sense to you? I don't know, these guys are pretty smart, but no, it doesn't seem to make sense. The, the Nebraska common sense was not kicking in. So giftcertificates.com decides to take on the funding and they start absolutely burning through cash. They open a processing center in New York. They have offices on the 57th and 58th floors of the World Trade Center. They hire a massive marketing agency in Seattle. And Sophia Loren, the classic Hollywood cinema star, was even their spokesperson. The perfect gift should be something unusual, original, something that you don't expect. Um, Giftcertificates.com's valuation went on to reach $100 million then 200 million, and a successful IPO was starting to seem inevitable. We filed then the paperwork to go public. Uh, so this would have been probably right at the peak of the bubble. We could not have timed this any worse. We did the whole thing with the road show, told all the stories, went to all the funds and did, did the whole thing. We were valued at around 400 some million we were priced and ready to go out. And all of a sudden that I remember Doug and I were sitting in a bar in New York and we were looking up at the screen and there was all this stuff about 
you know, so-and-so has pulled their IPO and so-and-so has stopped their IPO and uh, IPOs have, have stopped completely. And, and so I called our banker and just to say, hey, just, you know, what's going on? He doesn't answer. And this guy was like super responsive. Finally get somebody on the phone and, and uh, she says, well, didn't you hear all the bankers were fired today? Um, there's no one here. We don't have an investment banking department anymore. Wait, what? <laughs> and it literally was just this, you know, falling through your fingers. And we flew back to Omaha, tails between our legs, like, what are we going to do? This is a train wreck. And uh, it wasn't just a blip. I mean, it was a, it was a mess. And so uh, we just quit. Hey, Nebraskans, we've recently formed a new community for Nebraska Made listeners who subscribe to our Patreon account. And you might ask, what exactly is a Patreon? Well, it's a platform where you can give small donations to your favorite creators, like us, and you get to earn rewards. And in our case, you're going to earn free merch, behind the scenes episodes and outtakes of your favorite Nebraskan entrepreneurs, and exclusive professional services like free LinkedIn headshots and business cards. You can subscribe by following the link in the description of this episode. It was a Friday, I'll never forget this Friday, it was pouring rain. It was a miserable day in February 2002. And I'm doing this with my desk, just just like I don't care feeling sorry for myself phones ringing <sighs> hello anybody phones ringing ringing finally giftservice.com I help you hey this is Dave from Yelm Washington hi Dave what can I do for you I would love to be an affiliate of your website and I put him on speaker and I'm just thinking oh my god this is the last thing I want to be doing right now <laughs> it's just talking to this guy <laughs> tell me about your business Dave and he goes well I sell hammocks I pull his site up and it was just awful. It's these tiny little pictures and tiny descriptions. And, and I said, God, Dave, you know, this is, this is really a bad website. I'm sorry. <laughs> you told him that yeah, straight yeah, up. I just said, this is really, really a bad site. But I mean, that sounds cool. Why don't you just sell this thing? It doesn't sound like it's anything you want to be doing. And he goes, oh my God, I would love to. If you know anybody that wants to buy our business, just, you know, holler. And so my radar was zing. You know, while I'm cleaning the desk out, I'm thinking, wait a second, this this could be kind of fun. I said, well, I might buy it. Just kind of kidding. I said, what'd you do in sales last year? He's like, fifty seven thousand. I said, oh, okay. Uh, well, but I love the plurality of it. Hammocks. The name of it was perfect. It's so descriptive. I mean, it's not like you sell snow tires. It's it's hammocks. It's clear what it is. And did he know that this URL was great for SEO and everything? Or was he, did he not really no, realize no what he was sitting No, no marketing, no anything. So anyway, long story short, I just said, well, let me get back to you and, and see if this is something you want to do. Hang up. I called Doug. I go, hey, I think I got the next thing we're going to work on. What is it? Talk to me. Uh, hammocks.com. I'm in. <laughs> and... Um, that was the beginning of, of what we created, what was called hayneedle.com. And then at this point, your family has grown s- substantially, right? Yeah. Well, so when we, <laughs> when we started with, with hammocks, um, I had eight kids. and uh, When we, you started? Yeah, and so we converted a, in our house an, an attic into a little office. And this is back in the day where uh, dial-up was literally that, you know. So you had AOL. There was nothing else. And if someone decided to use the phone, I mean, you're disconnected. And so I'm in my attic. I've got eight kids running around, and people think we're insane. Jane was walking. My wife, Jane, was walking with a friend of hers in our neighborhood who, uh, and this is the mindset around how I think people view startups or entrepreneurship. And her friend stops her and touches her on the arm and goes, how's Mark doing? And she goes, why? What do you mean? What, what's wrong with that hammock thing? And she goes, well, I don't, it seems to be going okay. And, and, and she's giving her this like, mm, that, you know, midlife crisis, poor guy. You know, he's completely losing it, <laughs> selling hammocks from his attic, going to Barnes and Noble, you know, just like total loser. And, you know, our family, 
you know, big family, um, same wife, no twins, no mergers. Wow. You know, so, wow. And all people think we're all freaks. 16 yeah. years or so? Eight years? Just about, yeah. Just wow. about. And so uh, you talk about day-to-day motivation. I mean, there's nothing more than that because you kind of look over your shoulder and go, this doesn't work. I'm dead. <laughs> so it's going to work. And uh, we sort of knew what we had envisioned for where it was going to go. But we really didn't know the appeal that it would have on a national basis. And this was about when Google AdSense, the old Google AdSense, was, was coming on board. You could buy the, the name. And uh, we would sit there and go, well, God, nobody's buying this keyword. Let's be first in the world in hammocks. And overnight, we were number one in hammocks. And Did you see an uptick in sales Yeah, so sales like the first day where they're like 50 bucks and... And I remember the next day it was zero and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me like, what is going on? And then the next day they were 300 and then 600 and then we did a thousand and then it was like 2,500 and I was like, okay, hold on a second. All of our hammocks were right behind us. Uh, then we realized one day, the fateful day, uh, this guy calls and he, he goes, hey, I got my hammock. Thanks. Love it. Do you guys sell porch swings? I said, well, yeah, and I reach across like this, boom, and I kick Doug, and I go, look up board swing. He's like, he goes, it's available. So he buys, right while they're sitting there, the domain portswings.com, and I asked this guy, I said, so if you were to buy a porch swing, i just curious, what would it be made out of? <laughs> and the guy goes, well, I don't know, I suppose oak, and I go, oak, porch swing, and I find this manufacturer in Mississippi, and... And I said, so if you had a seven-foot porch swing, what do you think you'd pay for something like that? I never forget. The guy goes, hey, look, are you in this business or not? <laughs> and I said, of course we are. God, I have no idea. You know. And so we sell this guy a porch swing, and, and Doug just goes, you know, there's got to be other products. He takes his yellow pad out. We drive around Omaha, and we're peeking in people's backyards. Oh, my God, bird baths. Oh, Adirondack chairs, patio table. Anything, basically. Anything for the backyard. Because we just figured the home was probably pretty well tackled. We didn't know. But the backyard seemed to be an oasis of things that people had ignored. And so if somebody's looking for a hammock, they're probably looking for a bird bath. They could be looking for a porch swing. They could be looking for Adirondack chairs. Let's provide all of those things. But we did it differently, and we created a store around every single one of those brands. All right, so we would look at our gift certificates experience and go, okay, we did that wrong. We're not going to do that again. We do need to raise some capital, though. And we're hiring some really, you know, really good marketing people, good buyers. We needed a warehouse. You know, we just needed working capital. So we put a book together. We went around and told the story. And this time it was like I was expecting a different result. The same thing because you have the data to back it up. Yeah. You have the sales at this point. Right. You're at the front of this economy that's going to blow up. Right, yeah. And and we just couldn't get anybody interested. Part of it is it, the story we were receiving was, you know, look, Warren says not to invest in things like this. Is it because the bubble had just burst and so everyone's kind of hands off? People are hands off, uh, leery, thinking it's a fluke. A lot of people had lost money. And, and plus just saying, I don't know, I'm not sure this e-commerce thing is going to be around, frankly. But it, it did plant that seed in my, my head like, I wonder if we can change that narrative in the middle part of the country that nothing cool gets built out here. And Mark does build something cool. Even without the initial support of investors, Hayneedle grew from one little hammock website to an army of websites doing more than $350 million in annual revenue. In 2016, Hayneedle was finally acquired by Jet.com for $90 million. And all this was mostly seen as a huge win for Nebraska. But during this time, Mark keeps dwelling on this problem of finding funding for Midwestern companies. So now with Hayneedle off of his plate, Mark decides to finally do something about it. And so at the end of that, I said, all right, it's time for me to do something else. And this looks like it's working. I wanna think, I wanna see if I can solve this problem. And that problem is 
the lack of seed stage funding. And I've experienced it, I've seen it, I've lived it and breathed it. Maybe it's time that we try and solve it. And so that's what we tried to do with starting Dundee Venture Capital. And that was 2010, yeah. Over your career up until this point starting Dundee, I mean, I heard that you raised almost 150 million across all of your different all ventures, different, yeah. right? Uh -huh. So you have a ton of experience of sitting in these rooms, pitching people right. and trying to pry teeth essentially to right. get people to invest in these Midwestern ideas. Right, right. So you're gonna make that easier. That's that first round of funding that's, you know, it's sort of friends and family and maybe credit cards. And both of them are saying, go away, you know? So it's like, let's put together an institutional round of funding and let's professionalize things just a bit. And so I looked around and there wasn't anybody doing that. There was lots of angel investors. I think there's so many bright people in the middle part of the country that don't get that fair shake. And so that's what we decided to do. Today, Dundee Venture Capital consists of five equal partners across different markets throughout the Midwest. And after their latest fund in 2020, they expect to have a portfolio of around 50 companies with over $100 million invested across them to date. I'm JT Martin, and this has been a Grindstone production. Grindstone is one of the premier production and marketing firms here in Lincoln, offering everything you need to grow your business from video and podcast production to social media management and media buying. You can learn more by visiting grindstoneagency.com. February 9th, my dad passed away, but his signature was wearing these cardigans. <laughs> and so that's why you wore it today? Yeah. I so that's it. why I, I did it in his honor. And I thought, man, cardigan's got to come back. Oh, you can totally yeah. wear a cardigan. I didn't even think twice about it. It yeah. looked, looked great.